good morning dear students uh, today we will discuss on inverse system this system is related to the transformer transform analysis so already we have an equation for transform analysis that is h of z is equal to y of z divided by x of z that is nothing but output by input input now we need to inverse this system this is transform analysis system and we have to inverse the transform analysis systems and that's why i have written it as h inverse of z is equal to x of z divided by y of z when you inverse this you'll get x of z divided by y of z uh, you just remember this equation for inverse system which is related to the transfer function and the problem is like this uh, for the system having a transfer function h of z is equal to 1 minus 4 z inverse plus 4 z square z to the power of minus 2 divided by 1 minus 1 by 2 z to the power of minus 1 plus 1 by 4 z to the power of minus 2 so we need to find the transfer function of an inverse system and check whether it is whether it is um, both stable and causal we need to check whether it is uh, stable or causal within the limit of unit circle check out the poles so whether which lies whether it lies inside the unit circle or outside the unit circle by factorizing the denominator of a given equations and here is a given equation giver given question h of z is equal to 1 minus 4z inverse plus 4z to the power of minus 2 divided by 1 minus 1 by 2z inverse plus 1 by 4z to the power of minus 2 when you inverse this term when you inverse this term the denominator will come in the numerator and the numerator term will come to denominator now you divide numerator and denominator by z to the power of minus 2 because highest power is minus 2 that's why we are dividing z to the power of minus 2 we are dividing it by z to the power of minus 2 if it is z to the power of minus 3 we need to divide it by z to the power of minus 3 in order to get in a standard form so h inverse of z is equal to when you divide it by z to the power of minus 2 z to the power of 2 you will get z square 1 by 2 minus 1 by plus 1 by 4 divided by z square minus 4z plus 4 now you factorize the denominator this is in the form of a minus b whole square a minus b whole square so it will be z minus 2 whole square factorize numerator also you will get z, to the z minus 1 by 4 whole square plus 3 by 16 when, when you factorize numerator you will get 1 by 4 and 3 by 16 when you factorize the denominator, you will get z minus 2 whole square. Directly you can write it is in the form of a minus b whole square. That is z minus 2 whole square. So z minus 2 is equal to 0, z is equal to 2. So 2, it is outside the unit circle. We are getting 2. So, so our concept is the values or the poles should lie within the unit circle. If it is a, it is a 1. Your all the value all the value should lie within its unit circle but in this case the poles lie outside the unit circle at 2 so if it lies outside the unit circle then that system cannot be called as stable or causal this is your inverse system next is unilateral z transform so till now you have studied about the bilateral z transform that is a normal z transform is nothing but a bilateral z transform and whose range is from minus infinity to infinity bilateral z transforms range is minus infinity to plus infinity and unilateral z transforms range is from zero to infinity at the positive end only the values which values will lie in the positive axis or positive s plane just remember this for unilateral z transform 0 to infinity in case of bilateral z transform it is minus infinity to plus infinity so we have an equation that is a general equation of z transform that is x of z is equal to uh, uh, summation minus infinity to infinity x of n into z to the power of minus n but in this unilateral z transform that equation is going to modify you can have a look at this z the equation x of z is equal to 0 to infinity x of n into z to the power of minus n. it's a one-sided sequence it is a one-sided sequence the bilateral is two-sided sequence and here is the given question to solve the problem uh, determine the one-sided or unilateral z transform of the signal and these are the samples they have given 1 2 5 7 0 1 x of z is equal to minus 
uh, x of z is equal to 0 to infinity x of n to z to the power of n. You just have to put the values. So at uh, started from the 0, it should be in the right side, that right side values, some 0, x of 0, x of 1, and z to the power of minus 1, and x of 2, z to the power of minus 2, and x of 3, z to the power of minus 3, x of 4, z to the power of minus 4, so 5 z to the power of minus 5 you go on substituting the values from 0 to 5 because we are having 5 values 0 1 2 3 4 5 that's why we need to stop it at 5 this is the 0th line 1 2 3 4 5 the range is 0 to 5 by looking at this samples we can uh, judge that the range is 5, 0 to 5 that's why I written, that's why I stopped at 5 First we substitute 0, we will get z to the power of 0, we will get 1, it will be 1. Next, uh, substitute 1, it will be minus 1. We go on substituting till z to the power of minus 5. Later on, we have to substitute the values, what they are given for 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, till 5. For 0 it is 1 and for uh, x of 1 is equal to, uh, x of 1 is equal to 2 and z to the power of minus 1, x of uh, 2 is equal to 5 z to the power of minus 2 x of 3 is equal to 7 x of 4 is equal to 1 0 uh, 0 will will be it, it will become 0 0 into 0 will become 0 and z to the power of minus 5 1 into z to the power of minus 5 and this is the final equation and for some corollaries are there so using that corollaries we can solve the unilateral z transform these are the color corollaries you make a note of it and uh, later on we just go through this corollaries, six corollaries are there, these are the very important corollaries uh, in order to solve the problem in unilateral Z transform. And I will take a f one example from unilateral Z transform, that is which is related to the corollary. Uh, and here is the question, find the natural response of the system described by the difference equation. And here is the equation that is y of n, uh, y of n minus 1 by 4, y of n minus 1, minus 1 by 8, y of n minus 2 is equal to x of n plus x of n minus 1. The corollary gives information uh, about the replacement of any equations. We just have to replace the given equation by these corollaries. If they are given x of n minus 1, you have to remove, uh, you, you have to replace it by x of minus 1 plus z to the power of minus 1 y capital capital y1 of z. Like this you have to replace. In place of x of n minus 1, you have to write this equation. In place of x, my x of n minus 2, you have to write this equation. And in place of y of n minus 3, Oh, this equation is required. You just have to remove the given equation by these corollaries. Now look at this. Uh, we know that uh, the natural response due to the initial conditions only make only uh, make x of n is equal to zero. In a previous problem or in a previous chapter, we have studied that if you want to uh, calculate the natural response, we need to make a uh, right side or RHS zero. So that's what I have to do in this equation also. So this is the right side equation, you just make input as 0. In order to get the natural response, we have to make input as 0, Th that's why I made it 0 here. Uh, this will remain same, y of minus n, y of n, uh, minus 1 by 4, y of n minus 1, minus 1 by 8, y of n minus 2, and the right, right, hand, right hand side will become 0. Now you take a, taking a unilateral z transform, that's, why it, that's what I told you. So when you take a unitary z transform, it will become y of n will become y of z, and 1 by 4 y of minus y of n minus 1. Here is the equation y of n minus 1 can be replaced by y of minus 1 plus z inverse y of z. And that's what I have written it here. Replacement. It is just a replacement. In place of y of n minus 1, you have to write y of minus 1 z inverse y1 of z. Here is the equation. Here is the equation for y of n minus 1. For y of n minus 2, here is the equation y of minus 2 plus y of minus 1 z inverse plus y of z into z to the power of minus 2. That's what I did here. Uh, it is just a replacement by corollaries. After replacing, uh, you take y of z as a common. Uh, y of z, if you take y of z as a common, it will become 1 minus 1 by 4 z to the power of minus 1 minus 1 by 8 z to the power of minus 2. And remaining terms are 1 by 4 from this you take y of z common and here it is 1 by 4 y of minus 1 minus 1 by 8 
y of minus 2 minus 1 by 8 y of minus 1 z bar of minus 1 now you apply the initial conditions what they given so they have given the initial conditions like y of minus 1 is equal to 0 and y of minus 2 is equal to 1 so in place of y of minus 1 you just put 0 and in place of y of minus 2 you place 1 so here is so y of minus 1 will be 0 and y of 1 by 8 this will be 1 this is 2 you can have a look at this y of minus 1 y of minus 1 is equal to 0 or y of minus 1 is equal to 0 and y of minus 2 y of minus 2 is 1 that's why I written it as 1 and y of minus 1 is again it is 0 0 and therefore this term and this term will become 0 remaining is 1 by 8 into 1 so this now you calculate for y of z y of z is equal to uh, this 1 by 8 divided by 1 minus 1 by 4 z inverse 1 by 8 minus 1 by 8 z bar of minus 2 now you factorize the denominator factorize the denominator this denominator when you factorize you will get 1 minus 1 by 2 z inverse into 1 plus 1 by 1 by 4 z to the power of minus 1 so you will get two values 1 by 2 and 1 by 4 if you add you have to get 1 by 4 and if you multiply you need to get 1 by 8 and these are the suitable values that is 1 by 2 and 1 by 4 are the suitable values to calculate or to factorize the values next you follow the partial fraction expansion method by get, after getting this you follow the partial fraction expansion method to get the value of k1 and k2 so k1 divided by 1 minus 1 by 2 z inverse plus k2 divided by 1 plus 1 by 4 z inverse you follow the partial fraction fraction expansion method what i solved in the previous classes you follow the same procedure so then you're going to get the value for k1 that k1 is equal to 1 by 12 and plus k2 is equal to 1 by 24 after calculating after uh, using a partial fraction expansion method you will get this 1 by 12 and 1 by 24 later on you make an inverse of this uh, uh, given unilateral or uh, uh, obtained unilateral z transform inverse of the obtained unilateral z transform when you inverse it it will be in the form of 1 divided by 1 minus alpha and here also it is 1 divided by 1 minus alpha you just take 1 by 12 uh, is in the form of alpha to the power of n into u of n and here it is 1 by 24 and 1 minus this is in the form of 1 divided by 1 plus alpha that's why I have written it as minus 1 minus 1 by 4 whole to the power of n into u of n this is about the unilateral dress form uh, z transform uh, this finishes your z transform topic this is the end of model 3 thank you